I said, get you back. What's up guys, welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you clicking on my channel, you're very much welcome. Um, we're gonna get right into it at the moment. I'm not gonna take too long. We're gonna get into UFC 281. I've been definitely uh, waiting for this for this, um, for this this card. It is a good card. We got Israel Adesanya versus his uh, arch rival or arch um, nemesis, you could say, because he beat him before in, in the kickboxing. When they, they both used to fight in kickboxing, basically, and it's basically 2-0 to Alex Pereira, who is um, Israel Adesanya's um, opponent. So they, they used to fight in kickboxing, which most of you probably know already. Um, Pereira beat the champion Adesanya twice. The first time by decision, the second time, second time by uh, KO. It was a brutal KO, actually. And this is kind of what... Pereira is basically going by that he knocked him out brutally in the second in the rematch and I find that a lot of people are making Pereira the favorite because of this knockout because of this history um so we're actually going to get into that that's going to be part of my that's going to be the basis of my prediction actually looking at their history and looking at the type of fighters they are so it's happening this Saturday um what I think of this fight, I think it's a very good card, first of all. I think it's great that um, they've got Pereira in the UFC now. He's a great fighter. He's already beaten, I don't know how many people he's beaten so far, what his um, winning streak is, but I think he's beaten everyone by knockout so far. Um, he's got a lot of power. He's a huge guy for the weight. I don't know how he gets down to that weight, but he's a huge guy for the weight. Um, and he's going to be, he should be on paper, Israel Adesanya's most difficult test you know because one thing you notice about the other fighters he's had uh, Israel has had is uh, none of these fighters strike like him and it's because they don't have this kickboxing background if you watch the way uh, Adesanya strikes it's very different from everyone else who fights in the in the UFC it's very efficient very fast very efficient effortless and this is how they kind of teach you in kickboxing you know so this is one of the reasons why I think Edesenio is just heads and shoulders above everybody else in UFC. Just because of the striking is just totally different. But now he's up against a guy who comes from exactly the same background. They're exactly the same size. I mean, the same height at least. The same weight, obviously. The same height. And um, this is interesting because it's going to take away the advantage that Edesenio normally always has over his opponents which is the height which is the reach he doesn't have that against Adesanya you know and then uh, the experience and the kickboxing striking he doesn't have that either so what does he have well I would say in this fight there's a few things that are misleading to when you're calculating who's going to win and, I, and I'll tell you what they are the two fights that they had in kickboxing it's quite misleading. First of all, if you actually watch these two fights, you'll see that Adesanya was clearly winning. It was close, but he was clearly um, getting the better of Pereira in the first fight. And um, it ended up being a, a decision win. But I think he lost. And a lot of people think that Pereira lost that. So Adesanya should have got that first fight. Now, because Adesanya in his mind felt like he was robbed in the first fight I feel like he came into the second fight with totally the wrong mindset and I actually thought that from before Adesanya said it himself he came into the second fight wanting to prove something so that there would be no doubt in the judges minds because obviously like I said he thought he got robbed in the first fight so he was kind of over trying and second fight he was really dominating and clearly winning but that kind of you know pushing forward blow for blow fighting style doesn't suit Adesanya that's not his style at all and um, obviously too much offense lacking defense and defense and uh, you know that that whole kind of um, getting out of range and stuff like that that's the way Adesanya normally fights that's how he wins and he fought the totally wrong fight um, the second fight and left himself open for the knockout that's the reason why he got knocked out 
So people looking at this two uh, two wins, it looks clear clear cut that Pereira can beat him, but I don't think he can. So I think um, really Adesanya should have won both fights. Um, he clearly won the first, the second fight. He just came in with the wrong with the wrong uh, game plan going forward. Got countered by a smart fighter with the left hook, which is Pereira's um, you know bread and butter. That left hook is dangerous, and he got caught by it. Now, there was an interview with Adesanya where he didn't want to give away his game plan, but you could tell by the way he was talking, he's going to fight his fight. He knows, Adesanya knows what he did wrong in those two fights, especially the second fight where he got knocked out, and he's going to fight totally different. He's going to introduce Pereira to the UFC. He's going to set a fast furious pace he's going to be sharp he's going to hit him with hard shots anytime Pereira tries to uh, corner him he's going to hit him with brutal leg uh, uh, leg shots leg kicks and um, so that he can't stand in front of him so that he can't corner him he's going to move use a lot of angles he's going to be first with, uh, with the jab and uh, he's really going to kind of shut Pereira out. This is what his plan is. I could tell. He's going to introduce him to his proper fighting style. And the reason why I say this is because in kickboxing, they kind of have a different kind of uh, culture where it does. two fighters cannot kind of move around the, the ring like the way they do in UFC. They encourage the fighters to kind of go head to head and blow for blow. And... Um, that doesn't really suit Adesanya. This is the reason why Pereira had success. But if you actually watch watch them fighting, it's clear to see that Adesanya is the quicker opponent. And Pereira seems a little bit plodding. He's fast when it comes to when he actually goes to throw punches, but he's quite a plodding kind of fighter. He needs to kind of corner you. He's a pressure fighter, and you know Adesanya loves pressure fighters. He's just gonna move around, control the range you know, completely destroy his legs, strike from distance and um, and be evasive and set an amazing pace. And I think he's going to just uh, outstrike Pereira for most of the fight. Now, Pereira at some point is going to get close and he's going to jump in and try and uh, explode. And that's when he can be dangerous because he only needs that one shot. He only needs a few shots to get on the inside and that devastating left hook that he's got and that's all he really needs so I wouldn't be surprised if Adesanya is just picking him apart throughout the whole fight and then just get hit with one or two shots and gets knocked out I honestly would not be surprised if that happened I could clearly see the fight going like that I don't think it's going to be a blow for blow fight not at all because uh, Adesanya has got no intention of doing that again that's, that's what got him knocked out he's going to be maintaining distance and taking whatever's given basically you know he's going to take his legs away um Pereira is not used to the kind of uh, leg st leg strikes uh, leg kicks um that they do in in the MMA fighting he's not going to be used to all the evasive moving um people are wondering if he's going to shoot on him as in um, initiate wrestling i don't think Edison has got any um any idea of doing that but if they're in the clinch he may do something like that. Uh, I think f for the most part, it is going to be standing, but it's going to be more at range. And it's going to fight quite different from what Pereira has seen um, in the kickboxing. Now, Pereira himself, has he changed his style? Well, he is going to be ready for a different version of uh, Adesanya, a version that moves around the ring, strikes from distance, is very explosive, um, is very evasive. And to be honest, I can't really see how Pereira is going to be able to negate um, Adesanya's movement. I think it's a totally different ball game in the cage than it is in the in the ring, in the in the uh, kickboxing ring. Like I said before, in the kickboxing ring, both of both of the fighters come together, and there isn't that much moving around. There isn't that much space to move around, and the fighters are encouraged to kind of go blow for blow but in in the um in the octagon 
they're, they're also encouraged to go blow for blow, but it's totally different. You know, you're going to see Adesanya moving. You know, those reflexes, I think it's just going to kill uh, Pereira's chances, to be honest. And it depends on how long Pereira can kind of stay out of range. Like I said, I think he's going to stay out of range, strike from range. He is faster than Pereira with the striking, so I think he'll be first. And because of this, I think um, it could just get very ugly for Pereira. Just He could end up just following Adesanya around, waiting for an opportunity. Um, I can see that happening. Um, he's only explosive when you know you either stand in front of him or you give him a clear opportunity. I've seen some fighters who are a little bit defensive, and he doesn't he doesn't really strike unless he has a clear opportunity. You know, and I don't think he's going to really get that with Adesanya. So I could see Adesanya actually getting off to a really big lead, but like we said, the danger is he is very very powerful, ten times more powerful than he was when they first met in the kickboxing ring. Uh, and he he only needs kind of one shot, you know. He is very powerful. If you see how he's put people down, he's got that left hook. He's got a good straight right. He's got that lovely explosive uh, uh, feint, and then he goes into that knee, uh, you know, with that flying knee that he's, in, uh, he's, he's um, ended a few fights with, you know. So he's got the power, but can he land the power? I'm I'm not so sure he can set up anything that's going to trouble Adesanya. So, personally, I see Adesanya winning this. The only thing is, there is a chance of Pereira just because of his power and because of the history. I think, you know, the way life goes, it would be so, uh, you know, like bad luck if Pereira was to win by knockout because it is likely that if he is going to win, it's going to be knockout. Maybe he catches Adesanya and... Uh, it's very difficult to come back from three losses by the same person. That's all I'm saying. So the pressure could get to Adesanya in the fact that, you know, he has to win to look credible because it would have been beaten three times and there's no way back from three losses. So basically, when, um, you know, when there's a lot on the line, when you've been beaten twice and you have to win, there's a lot of pressure. There's not much pressure on Pereira. If he lost, he could say, oh, well, you know, I've beaten him twice and now he's got one back. He could say, it's my first time in the UFC. I haven't been in the UFC long enough to acclimatise to the to the game, but I'll be back. And he, he wouldn't have lost any credibility because everyone knows it's his first time in the UFC. He's already got two wins, impressive wins over Adesanya. But Adesanya has lost twice already. So third time, Adesanya's kind of done. You know, not saying his career is done, but he's going to have to climb his way back up to get any kind of uh, recognition. And respect, you know, to get respect after being beaten three times, that would be um, really difficult. So there is more pressure on Adesanya, but I think Adesanya is a kind of person who um, who is better when he's under pressure. He's been under pressure before. He's fought great fighters before, you know, and um, he's had some great wins. He's learnt more than Pereira has had the chance to adapt, if you see what I mean. So... I think, stick my neck out here, but I think Adesanya wins by just outpointing him all the way through the fight and he just gets a majority decision. Um, that's what the smart money would be on. But something in the back of my mind says Pereira is just going to land that devastating punch. And it's going to be uh, back to the drawing board for Adesanya, you know. He's really got to look out for that dynamite power that, that uh, Pereira has. That's how I kind of feel um, about this issue. I don't think Edison is going to finish Pereira. I think Pereira is a big, extremely large, strong guy. He doesn't look like someone who's easy to finish. So I think he's more going to be a point decision. Also, the reason why I think that is because Adesanya wants to kind of strike and not be hit. He's not going to go blow for blow in this fight. So I, I wouldn't expect him to really be kind of putting that much uh, combinations together, which is what he would need to kind of knock Pereira out, I think. So I think we see a decision win for Adesanya. Another great fight on the card, um, Michael Chandler against um, Poirier. That's going to be, you know, bomb burner, as they say. Uh, another great fight. We know Michael Chandler, very explosive. Um, comes forward. A little bit too comes forward a little bit too much, I think personally. But I love his fighting style. 
always gives the fans, you know, 100% fan favourite. Um, and then, obviously, we know that uh, Dustin Poirier, man, he's been fighting for so long at a high level. Um, never been, like, an undisputed champion. Um, he's always kind of fallen at the, at the last hurdle. But, I mean, world-class fighter. So, this is going to be a tricky one, man. Um, first thing I would say about these two fighters, uh, I like these favors, these fighters, two of my favorite fighters. Um, Dustin Poirier does a lot of things very, very good, but he doesn't really do anything in particular exceptional. I just think he's he's just very, very good. You know, he's got good striking, un- underestimated striking. Um, he doesn't really use his wrestling, but he does have kind of a he has submitted some people before but it's not really part of his game he's more of a striker um, he's got great leg kicks which you saw he used against um, famously used against McGregor in their third fight um, he's a solid fighter and he's a tough guy he beat um, Gaethje and to beat Gaethje you have to be a tough person <laughs> you know you have to be now Gaethje beat Michael Chandler but that fight was just amazing one of the best fights ever you know they just went blow for blow, honestly. And Michael Chandler is a very explosive, strong guy. Um, if I had to stick my neck out on this fight, I would have to go for Dustin Poirier to win this fight. Not just because he's ranked higher and he's got more experience, but I think their mindsets, the mindset is slightly different. Um, with Michael Chand- Chandler, he seems like someone who he's more concerned with giving the fans a great fight than he is actually to win. This is the problem I always see with with Michael Chandler, and I like him. But he just always seems like the kind of guy who's more concerned about what the fans think of him and what people think of him as a, you know, as a, as a brave kind of come forward guy. He always wants to just come forward and kind of forget his defence and He's got a lot of tools that he could use, but he seems not to use them. He seems to just try to be explosive. And a lot of the times, he loses because of that reason. He kind of lost against um, the champion at the time before Makovic, uh, Mak- Makachev beat um, Oliveira. Um, before Makachev beat Oliveira, Oliveira fought Marco Chandler. And Marco Chandler was actually winning the fight. But then he kind of loses, either loses concentration or he loses focus or he wants to brawl too much. He ended up getting stopped. He fought Gaethje. He was really putting it on Gaethje. Instead of kind of like being smart with his defense or saving his energy or something, he kind of, you know, just ate shots and he was walking forward as if he can't be hurt. And then he got stunned and stuff like that. And he lost. You know, Gaethje was actually more concerned about winning and Chandra was more concerned about looking like a warrior. And he tends to do this in fights. I'm not sure why he does this. Fans love it. But I think the fans loving that is making him do that more. And I don't think it's ever good to get hit the way he does. I mean, if you ask me, if you've got skills, you should use them. You know, there's no there's no reason to be walking forward, taking shots. And Chandler does that a lot. And I think he's going to try and do the same against Poirier. And Poirier has got more class than that so I think Poirier gets it done in the end the only reason why I'm not 100% sure is that it's only three rounds and that favours Chandler because Chandler's very explosive in the first three few rounds you have to go through a real storm with him and then he kind of gasses later on so a five round fight would suit Dustin Poirier instead of a three round fight so that's the only thing making me not sure I could see Chandler winning definitely but I think I'm, I'm going to have to favour Poirier uh, on this one to to get this one maybe by decision yeah decision win i'm going to stick my neck out and say poirier and last on this uh, fight card is um dan hooker versus um claudio um this is going to be a tough fight because um you know dan hooker he's um slipped quite a lot down the rankings and he's looked quite vulnerable very vulnerable in his last couple of fights and um, Claudio has been looking very good, very dominant, especially with his um, kind of jiu-jitsu ground kind of game. And, um, you know, he's been looking quite good at what he does. And, you know, Hooker has not been looking so good. But, unfortunately, 
I think, unfortunately for Claudio, who's kind of coming up, I feel like Hooker has kind of gone back to what he should have been um, focusing on before he's lost it. And those very devastating losses that he's um, that he recently had, I think, has really lit a fire, if you see what I mean. He's been training with Adesanya. He looks in the greatest shape I've ever seen him in. He looks physically bigger. He's definitely physically stronger um, from his frame. And um, I think he's just going to be a bit too much for Cla for Claudia. So this is going to be a nice win. You know, coming back a nice win. I think it will probably be a decision. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a, a good win. He needs kind of a confidence bo boost. You know, even though he's a confident person, those losses have taken a toll. And he seems like he's in the right place. He's done everything possible to make sure that he's like, better than before you know and, I, and I, I've seen that in his shape and his sparring and stuff like that he's really trained he, if he basically if he can't win this fight I think he's done I don't think he can win any fight because he looks in the best shape I've seen him in so I think he should get it done against Claudia and last but not least as they say we have um, Carla Esparza versus Zhang Wei um, Zhang Wei has really become a crowd favourite in the last um, last few years She's so polite, she's so nice, even when she lost and she kind of, you know, was kind of denying it. But um, since then, she's definitely become a crowd favourite, I think. Um, she's great fighting style, very powerful, very explosive, good hands. Um, she's had some really impressive wins. Obviously, she had a devastating loss, but outside of that loss that she had, um, I think she's just... Been, she's just looked amazing, you know, and um, um, definitely Esparza, um, she has earned this position, she's really worked hard and she's got a good um, ground game, very good ground game, I think, I'm going to make this quick, I think she's going to be a little bit too slow, I think she might be a little bit too slow um, for, for Zhang Wei, Zhang Wei very fast, very quick, explosive, and I think that's what's going to um, be the difference in this fight. If if Esparza can't kind of get hold of Zhang Wei and get her to the ground, I think she easily gets picked off on on the feet. The longer it stays on the feet, I think she gets picked off uh, by Zhang Wei. So um, I mean, I think Zhang Wei gets this done basically on the feet. Um, although Esparza is really tough, I could see it being like a, a decision win, but I'm gonna stick my neck out and say Zhang Wei gets the knockout. Once again, guys, if you enjoyed my content, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have a lot more videos coming out in the near future.